doing? <laughs> yeah, okay. What the hell are you watching, bro? Ooh. What am I watching? I don't know. Nah, you talk about me struggling to reach over to press that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, sound, the, the sound, the sounds you making. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm fat. I'm trying to, yeah. I'm trying to handle yeah. it. I went to the gym this morning. I went to the gym this morning. Get rid of this shit, dog. I was supposed to. Yeah. I ain't go, but I'm going tomorrow. I'm about to get nah. back to my five day, five day shit. Oh, you got that, buddy. I ain't got that in me, my nigga. I don't got that in me. Oh man, but yesterday, <laughs> man, what? You got everything in you. Pause. That's what I was nigga. about to say. <laughs> well, no, I wasn't. No, gonna, I not what I, I meant. Was gonna say pause, like, yeah, just stop, like, gonna, it's not what I meant. I'm saying you got anything you want to do in you. Damn. All pause right, go again, ahead. my nigga. Go ahead. Just stop. Just stop. Just stop. Just stop everything you've been doing, dog. Nah, man. <laughs> what the fuck, nigga. You win. Nah, you, yeah. We're just going to stop I'm there. Like pause, nigga. Reverse. <laughs> nah. Yo, but yo, yesterday was a uh, uh, yesterday we went to the PodCon. Um, Wait, what is it called? PodCon. <laughs> All right, dog. Like I say, con. What you say? Conference is a. It's called pon, con, PodCon. PodCon. Let me get. Let me get my Derek voice on PodCon. Who the fuck is Derek? I don't it's fucking not, know, bro. Some rent, some white dude that fucking handles your taxes. I don't fucking know, man. I don't know who Derek is. That's Derek. <laughs> Go ahead, no, Derek is the nigga that be running the niggas' girls when they fucking their boyfriends <laughs> go to work. <laughs> they Derek, got is, Derek is the motherfucker who makes his family sing in the car and he lets them know that. <laughs> bow, bow, and I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> and exactly. Derek is, and Derek is a nigga that fucks Derek's wife when Derek when Derek's gone. Oh, we we'll gonna get it. Podcon. <laughs> he drives a twenty four Charger Hellcat. Bought by his, bought by his, uh Charger Hell Hellcat is crazy. Continue, I don't fuck it though with this. <laughs> Charger <nah>. Hellcat is crazy. <laughs> Whatever. He drives a Hellcat. Um. Nah. Yesterday went to Podcon. Um. You know, we got out there. It was a it was a nice turnout, man. And like I said, me and Kev went yesterday. We got out there early, man. It was a nice line. It was wrapped around the fucking building. It was it was good to see all these people out there. Yep. Entertaining from the rip. Just was, just standing, just standing in the line. It was good. It was good vibes the shit, all the way the through. The shit Not began at the line, you know. I was telling Dre off air about the two people. Oh. Who thought it was cool, you know the the outfits these people had on. A lot of them was eccentric. Like you can tell you you can tell that as we just pulling up looking for parking. He's a podcaster. She's a podcaster. Like you, they had the podcaster look. But it was a couple out there drawing yesterday. It was two people out there yesterday who had canes. The Ron Asley canes from <laughs> Contagious video that I think had no use for these canes. They just I just. They just thought it would go good with their outfit. I'm pretty sure they like their outfit on their bed because they was going on their bed. <laughs> they laid this shit out, and at some oh point, you had to go in your closet and grab that cane and lay that cane next to your outfit and look at that shit. Like on their bed is the craziest shit I've ever heard <laughs> for grown yeah, people. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna kill Overnight. this shit. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> kill this shit. Name. Like the. Yo, but I'm saying you had to have that mindset, like, yeah, I'm gonna kill this shit with with the with the king. Like, this shit was funny, man. You you had you had that. Then you had what was also funny. Like, we was waiting out there for. Like I said, it was a nice line and a nice turnout. So, mind you, me and Kev was standing out there. It was cold yesterday. We were standing out there for a good two hours. We got there an hour early. Yeah, we so in we, line by we were in line by three o'clock. I wanted to get there in time for us to have parking. You know, this yeah. is this, this downtown Philly, and the Met. um, there was no parking. We we got there so early that they hadn't even closed the street off in between. Uh, what was that, Poplar? I don't think yeah. they even closed Poplar off yet. And yeah. um, we but when we got a line, we were in line for about like twenty minutes, and then they closed it off. So we got there pretty early to. You know, try to get our position in there. I didn't know if they were going to have assigned seats or what, but I wanted to make sure that we were good. 
Okay. So we're sitting in line, sitting in line, chilling. Everybody, we, everybody's doing the same thing. You know, this is taking pictures for social media, doing their little videos and whatever they got to do. That's you can tell. We all podcast there. We all trying to get a social media up. So these two chicks roll up. I'm not gonna lie. The, both of them look good. One a little too much makeup. Should have lied. Yeah, one a little. I'm not lying. One a little too much makeup. She the one the makeup. who who felt she was the cutest. Yeah, but let me tell you. The story. one yeah. was right. Yeah. Yeah. She was the cutest. She probably, thought she was probably, probably she right. Had, she had the makeup it. on. She right. had the blouse on. Had the titties out. The titties had makeup on them. Like the the cleavage had makeup in the V. Like it, you could just tell it was just a lot of. A lot went into this outfit. A lot went into getting her ready to go to the shit. That's so she's, motivated, buddy. she's taking she's taking the pictures with her and her girlfriend. They're taking the picture. She's happy that she's there. She's taking the fr- pictures in front of the Met. She's letting you know she's there. Friend gives her the you know you. that we're we're too cute hug like the little pat on the back. This chick thinks, <laughs> mind you, it was like three hundred people, three four hundred people in this line already. She thinks she's going to go cut in line with some dude. So she just walks up next to the guy, starts talking to him. I'm like, oh, he must have been holding a lot. I mean, the line for his co-host. Next thing y'all know, she starts to walk off and the boy starts snapping. I don't know what she was thinking. She think I'm going to be standing in line and she just going to come up here and cut. I seen ass and titties before. I ain't worried about it. In my mind, this nigga had an orange. He had orange glasses on. Never forget this nigga. Big, big nigga. Big bald head nigga. Dark skin nigga with orange glasses on and an orange hoodie. This nigga obviously didn't like pussy. You can just tell by his mannerisms and how he was talking. He was not concerned. He approached the wrong boy to try to <laughs> cut in line with she probably would have had a better chance with, you. with two dudes in front of him, which looked like some, you know, they like that 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 you know they would had the anime nerd shirts on the big, you know, they look nerd. They had the nerd look going on. Maybe she could have got that shit off, but she picked Big Gay Al, and that shit wasn't rocking. Hey yo, I'm not going to say the boy was <laughs> gay. Stop. Kev, Kev loves stop. Kev loves to bring a depiction on a motherfucker. He got to stop because of what he's doing. You know what I mean? No, but, it wasn't the, what he was wearing. Is he, he was like uh, this. A lot of people were there about business. <laughs> you know, like, hey, yo. like this, like. <laughs> why did see him do <laughs> none of that shit? <laughs> why did they? Why did they? Was, why did they was trying to explain? <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, because I see <laughs> when the dude was bringing the camera around. And and fucking <laughs> having people trying to get oh, hype. The ball wasn't on none of that type time. The ball was he on his wrist. Thug shit. Nah, he was. Yeah, he was nah, like, nah, yo, <laughs> we in here, dog. You know what nah. I'm saying? So he wasn't acting. And I, I ain't gay. Him. Yeah, I ain't see him do all that. Can't, I did. Have like I a, did. a little spin on a nigga. <laughs> yo, <laughs> that nigga gay. Can't trust <laughs> nothing. Can't trust <laughs> nothing. Can't say. Nah, dude, yeah. man. Don't no nigga wear their sunglasses on top of their head like this. Bro. Orange sunglasses at that. Bro. Like nigga had orange that is sunglasses. Such a bad reason to label someone as gay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that labeling them. Yeah, yeah, he labeled them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not labeling a nigga, but she obviously picked the wrong nigga to cut in line in front of. She, every yeah, nigga the in guy line who wasn't having the wrong it. nigga. Yeah. Oh, he <laughs> wasn't having every it. Every nigga in that line. Kev, was you gonna let her get in front of you? Oh hell no, yep. I wasn't letting right, that, that make you gay? up. Them greased up titties in front of me. I like yo, you you want to get in line? You can cut in front of niggas behind me. I don't care what you do. I don't give a fuck what you do with the niggas behind me. Like like niggas been standing out here for a minute. Like which you can just see like the people walking up. It was a lot of like it was some people had their gear. It was a lot of weird. It was a lot of weird motherfuckers pulling up there yesterday. Like uh, what's like the nigga with the like I was telling Dre off nigga had like the Lego piece waves like his shit was just too extra dark but this nigga had I don't know talking about the boy who was dressed up yeah the nigga who had the trench coat with the fur on his collar no <laughs> no pictures I, I, bro, I can't see that. take pictures I can't take pictures of niggas the hell you can right the hell <laughs> you can so I'm looking at this nigga like damn this nigga he must he be like a dick off an episode of Power. Yeah. 
<laughs> did. Okay. Yeah, he, he didn't did. look. Yo, he he. Don't let Kev. He didn't look. Don't let Kev. He the nigga. I mean, the nigga definitely brought his A game out because you don't know what to expect, and that's probably yeah. how the nigga dresses. You know, yeah. what I mean, he Talk was definitely that. spiffy. He did not look. He wasn't underdressed. He was definitely overdressed, but. And they got too he much didn't look terrible. He Beijing wasn't going. He had too much. <laughs> he he had might too have much. had his hair dyed. He might have had his hair dyed. You know what Mike, I'm saying? Jet black. Mike, nigga. He might have had his hair dyed. Mike, nigga. Make it nigga seem like had his hair dyed, dyed, nigga. This nigga hey. hair, bro. <laughs> this nigga hair. Go ahead, man. Mike. That nigga that wasn't, had. That wasn't even one of the craziest looking niggas. Because he no. didn't look crazy. He looked like he was a business man. Maybe an entrepreneur. Maybe he was. You know, you dress for the job you want, right? That's how that's you know, that's what you was taught. And he was dressed up, you know what I mean, to the nines. Yeah. But but there were some people out there but who but yeah. were dressed a little wow. Yeah, like maybe something you see off of anime. Yeah, yeah, it was real. no bullshit. But, I seen but you can tell that it was it all like podcasts, trucks, man. It looked like, like he had a pair of six inch chucks yeah. on. Did you see the boy with the brown six inch chucks? Oh, that's fire! They weren't real chucks. Yeah. They weren't real oh yeah, chucks. I seen that. And then, six six were like chucks. platform shoes, and the nigga had floods. But the nigga had floods. Yeah, flood pants All right. on. All right, y'all. <laughs> no, no, no. This is ain't no and floods. Continue. So move it along, man. Yeah. So y'all we, y'all like just, I said, we're going there. Bust like, on people. Free. <laughs> I wasn't nah, bending. No. I'm just saying I'm that's sorry, what we going there. It's like. Uh, people came from all parts, though. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> we don't know the styles of different areas that we're not from. You know what I mean? We know. No, nah, none of that shit y'all said was style. People, people came from Cali just for the day. You know what I mean? So they can come to this yeah. event. There's people from Maryland, New York, people from down south. So they came from all corners of the United States. You know what I mean? Um, so you got to see different. It was just different type of people with different styles. You know what I mean? One boy had a so, too legit to quit hammer jacket on a world tour jacket from the night. Oh, a real, oh, a real one. Oh, okay. I thought you was. Yeah, I mean, yeah. probably what or not. No, it was a two. It said on the back, too legit, too legit to, to quit world tour. You know what I'm saying? On the front, it had something else. So, but you could tell it was a it was a retro joint. Okay. You know what I mean? I hate so, it people, so people people definitely were showing their style. Like he, like so, Kev said, he had the train conductor in there. You know yeah. what I mean? Chick had so, the, the Thomas and the Thomas engine train conductor, but moving on, like so we get into the building. Mind you, it's three thousand people, man. Uh getting there, your boy DJ Alamo was hosting the thing, doing his ones and twos and shit. We sit down, we get front front, bro. Like it's our seat in the fucking stage. Like it's boom, boom. It's like we right there. Maybe I should have went row That's one row back. Yeah, but we sat right we, there. We on the front. We should have yeah. got direct middle yeah, to get we got. better chances to answer questions. I mean, to ask questions and shit like that. It seemed like our side wasn't really getting love like that. Yeah, mm. so that's I ain't no here, no here there. So it was a good time, regardless. But yeah, so Wallow, so first Wallow, Gillian Wallow come out, mad energy, you know. Every the crowd went crazy, man. And of course, you know, Wallow, man, from the rip, just giving game, helping people out, telling everybody, you know, you know, welcome to the event. This is a free event. Which he said he put on for the hood. Like he wants to give back. He didn't want to charge with his how he broke it out. He didn't want to charge people for free knowledge. For free, for free knowledge free. that you can attain on the internet and also make you come there and make you feel like, man, I paid. Five hundred dollars of getting here for shit I could have got off the internet. He's like, you know, and everybody in the hood can't afford that. He's like, I know a couple of people here that just starting podcasts out that just need this knowledge. So he, um, so yeah, so yeah, it, it was good. Like I said, Gilly came out. You know, they came out with the energy, man. You know, yeah. Shout out to Gilly. That, that motherfucker is funny. Yeah, so you know they came out with their routine and shit like that. And um the first guest was uh who's uh I'm I got it down here. The first guest was um Kev got the pictures, he should be uh is a, a finance company uh, uh EO Haitian and um 
That, no, that's his name. The CEO of Haitian. I, I can't remember his, his name. You name. got I, the pictures on your phone, nigga. Like, I, just, I, I, removed, my, I he, removed my phone. Is he the guy from Fresh and Fit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He lived, they, they live down here. Um, He also had uh, Tasha from the Shade Room. He had uh, Charlemagne. Damaris, he had Damaris Long and Herman, Haitian CEO, Dosa Jr. Yeah. Yeah. So they came out there, man, and they spit some definite. Ge- they they threw out some gems for sure. So what y'all get from him? What we get from him, man. So I was watching it with y'all, by the way, and thank y'all. Yeah, both first, first, for first the phone. thing, basic like everybody. This is for everybody, and everybody said the same thing that came out there. All the guests. First thing you do in your podcast, get the content out there. If you're gonna start a podcast, just start a podcast. It don't matter if you're just starting a podcast with your phone, which, you know, to all to old school podcasts, some of them don't feel like that's not actual podcast because it's really what they consider the vodcast or video cast. It's not an actual podcast, which is audio and everything like that. But um, they gave out that the business. They said, um, you know, basically, um. Basically, you know, how, you know, build your brand, um, build your brand. And they also gave us knowledge on how to do finance. First thing they said, first thing you got to get is an LLC. Mm -hmm. We always, Kev's always been preaching that shit like that. Second thing they said, get a business number. This is how you go about getting, securing the the money from the bank. Get a business number. You can get that from culture.com. That's C A L L T U R E dot com. Culture.com. Uh get a real website. Uh you go um you get a website. Anybody build your real website, you can go on uh was fiber fiber, get, fiber yeah, to get it built. Yeah. Fifty dollars build your real website. Or um, you can where do we go? We went to GoDaddy, but they said Fiverr and something else they said was a lot cheaper. You can build a website for yeah. Probably Wix. Wix, something way cheaper. Next thing, get a business address. You mm-hmm. know, you can get that from opus.com, O P U S.com. Yeah, get you a virtual address. Then he said, hit up three banks, man. The three banks he gave us was Key Point Bank. That's an online Sun, bank. Yeah, Sun East Federal Credit Union and, uh, and, and, and Key Bank. Now, you know, he told us, you know, also fix your credit is ways to fix, you know, get your credit fixed. Get I ain't gonna get all in the all that shit is different ways yeah. to fix your credit, you know what You're I'm just... saying? Yeah, you know. And then you know, after you fix your credit, man, just, then you go st- you know, you start asking for these loans, but you can ask for twenty thousand for each loan. He said the way to do it is is three, what is it, three credit bureaus and, and three different what is it, uh Experian. TransUnion, yeah, TransUnion, and, Equ- and Equifax, mm-hmm. yeah, those are the yeah. three. So basically, how I explain that shit to every time you get your credit check, you get a which is a inquiry and, and which is a hit to your credit. Basically, saying go to three different banks that check that use these three different uh, credit bureaus to do the uh, the the inquiry on your account. So. If somebody using Equifax, one bank you get Equifax, then you go to another person that will use TransUnion, and you will use uh, I can't think of the third name I, I said it to Experian. Experian, you will use another bank to check Experian. You can get hit each three of these got people up for twenty thousand dollars a piece because they won't see that inquiry that you just had on your credit from those other people. Uh, the the biggest thing that I took because I I was listening. Um, when you guys were there, I was listening. Thanks to y'all is having a plan also to be able to pay those loans. Um, the, the, the thing about those particular loans is they work different than like your normal loan where it's like, Hey, you know, you, you can go get a loan for your house and Hey, this date every month you got to pay it. Um, so what you can also get, or the things that you can get is business credit, Right which you can kind yeah. of keep your credit or keep that for as long as you long as you want and then use it sparingly 
for things that you got to get. So it's other ways you can you can kind of do that. So it don't so it doesn't scare people. People think you got to go and get a loan and oh shit, I got this big payment I got to make. But it's like really you just you can start with just just getting business credit cards and paying for shit with your credit card yeah. and paying them off as you can. Man, because it's I mean this podcast shit. If you want to do it the right way, like I said, if you want to do it, like you start off with a phone, like I think I'm on the phone. Right it, now. Yeah, he's on the phone right now. But our equipment, as far as our equipment goes, like I got three cameras. Ran me twelve hundred. We got this uh, roadcaster that was six hundred. Each one of us got a laptop. That was another fucking G ball a piece. You know what I'm saying? You, you spent two racks lights and everything like everything is a lot of other shit that you got to purchase man you uh you got a monthly subscription to whoever you're using whether it's pod bean or like i we which we prefer lipson hey lipson thank yeah. you Shout out. My podcast. uh we also what we use right now is uh we use stream yard you know we use uh we use stream yard to do what we doing right now this is how we stream to all the different platforms and everything like that that's how we able to stream and everybody's able to comment and do what they what they need to do as far as you know if they want to do a podcast online you know it lets you get out to uh <clears throat> facebook uh, if you want to stream live to youtube uh twitter instagram so it just helps you stream just to have your face like we we stream like that's what we do Nobody else does it. We 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 do that. Um, you you definitely want to you definitely want to um, take it slow to start off. So I, I have a podcast also, another podcast in addition to this one. This one is my uh, uh my my love, like this one that I'm on right now. Obviously, is like the one that has my heart. And uh, but I have another podcast that I that I do for people who just started. And what I preach is start with what you got. Right. Start with what you got. If you got yeah. a phone, you, you do you could do this for free. If you got a phone, you can go get you a little a little mic, a little lapel mic that you could start with, and you could just do your shit from there. Do a little fifteen minute podcast and load it up on YouTube, which is free. Uh, load it up through um, through Spotify podcast, which is free. Like, there's a lot of free options that you can use to start. Just don't stop there. Yeah, we started on a phone with four chairs in a room, no mics, no none of that. We just started on a phone recording. We didn't have anything at all. So don't think that you need a lot of a lot of shit to get your ideas and your creativity off the ground. Start from the bottom, work your way up, get a feel for what you want to do and how you want to do it and learn as you go along, we've went through so many learning curves with this podcasting, um, figuring out how we want to do things, how we should go about things. We've all had different inputs of, you know, what we should do and what we shouldn't do. And in reality, me and Kev, Kevin and I, as we went to the pod con last night, we realized that all of us spoke just a piece of what we needed to combine into what we want this entity to be. We all were saying things that we wanted or we felt as though should be done when in reality, everything that we said as a unit needed to be done. So when you start coming across things and you start taking different turns and, and trying to figure out how you're going to go about it, don't let any idea that you have stray you away, jump into some shit. If you want to do it one way, and you feel like maybe you should do it another way, or maybe you should try both of them. Take all angles. It's the time. You know what I'm saying? You just just get it out there. We have people who ask us all the time, all three of us, separately and together. They want to start a podcast, how they should do this, how they should go about that. Just do and it. We could tell you what we know, but at the end of the day, you really just got to, you know what? I'm going to sit down and I'm going to just do it. I'm going to try just it. I'm going to see how this flow goes. I'm going to see how I like things and see how where I can take this. And yeah. that's and that's how we it's not it's not like we're successful, you know, 
crazy doing crazy shit right now but we've jumped into situations where we've gotten 4 million views we've 20,000 views we get 19 views sometimes you know we just try a bunch of different things yeah. that we you know see where it takes us and now we're at a crossroad where we realize you know what we can't just try this and then be like all right that's not working let's do that no let's do it all you know what i mean we need to do every piece of everything that that we see worked and maybe didn't work and try to integrate the two and i mean me me and kev definitely came to that realization last night when we we just looking at each other and just the eye contact let let us both know like yo we all said all of these things separately why are and they're saying all of this shit in one sentence yo you need to do this this and this and we like damn why didn't we why didn't we focus on all of us together and everything that we're saying and put it all in one category instead of jumping from one thing to just try another thing you need to take all avenues you need to be and, able to reach all points and here's some of the people that said it you had the founder of the shave room said the same thing we've been saying about just jumping in the podcast you had the head the global head of podcasting and youtube music say the same thing you had Charlemagne and uh and uh what's her name and Dolly, the founders of the uh Black Effect Podcast Network. Black Effect Podcast Network say the same thing. Uh you had a chick uh from hundred my first hundred K podcast say the same thing. These is all all big people saying mm -hmm. the same thing. All three of us been saying to ourselves separately that we need to do is like it was the podcast, the thing last night that we took we took from it, dog, is from what all of them had to say is like be original. Right. And that was the thing that we were struggling to find out. Cause I, I I think that's something I used to always say all the time. And I just couldn't figure out what the fuck it meant. It was like, yo, you gotta be yourself. You can't be this podcast, and you can't be them, and you can't be that. You gotta be you. You know what I'm saying? You you have to be you. You got to be unique because, like I said, right now, pretty soon, just like the music business is right now, podcast is going to become oversaturated with fucking podcasts. And you're going to have 40 motherfuckers sounding alike and this these people sounding alike and that. You got to be able to stand out for them to say, for somebody to say, hey, I love that's you. the new big, yeah, that's the new big hit right there. That's the new thing right there. That's where it's going at. I I think I personally think you definitely gotta be original because you can you can't fake being original if that makes any sense. So what, what that means is uh like what I took from you know a bunch of things that they were saying is when it comes to originality, if you stay true to who you are with what you're doing within whatever niche you're in, no one can copy that or they can try to copy that, but you'll be able to do it for longer because it's it comes naturally for you. If I'm a guy who makes jokes, right? And I make jokes off the cuff, which I do. I'm going to always be able to make a joke off the cuff, no matter what, because that's just who I am. But if you got other people who are trying to like write them in and figure out how to say it, it's going to come off as unnatural. They're not going to be able to, to do it for as long as you, mm -hmm. and you're going to outlast them overall so it's, it's it's just like anything you figure out a way to be original it's like a painter figure out a way to be original or that a, a way that connects to you to put your content out because you still got to get good and then you just keep perfecting how you give it out that's all that doesn't mean stop when you when you feel comfortable it just means you know you might have to do it for longer we, what we was talking about seven years what, what, what was the what was the Go ahead. It's, it's seven years. He said most podcasts take seven years before they see money, any money, a penny. And they said the and it was Charlemagne was was what he said was facts last night. I'm because we we had this check. I think Dre you wrote us out a check like yo, two million dollars. Yo, there's that is a point zero 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 one percent chance of podcasts that do that. They're they the only ones that get checks like that, blank checks written like that. And those guys really stand out amongst everybody. They say, oh, most, most podcasters, he said, listen, who wouldn't take $50,000 to jump on something once a week or twice a week 
and just talk and just talk and you getting paid fifty thousand dollars just to talk and said for an hour and a half for 40 weeks a year you make fifty thousand dollars i'll give them the context with that um with that particular one so basically um i mean he was just talking about you being able to make revenue and uh, podcasts that that they usually look for at the black effect um network what they're looking for at the black effect network they're looking for they're they they only focusing on black podcasts, but they're not. They say, "Listen, Cam and them already. Everybody's doing sports. Everybody's doing the music. Everybody's doing um, what else? Everybody's doing sports, music, and comedy." He says, "Not a lot of people in the space of mental health. There's not a lot of people in the true crime, which is they don't have at all. They don't wonder. They wonder why black people don't do the true crime shit. Which, like I said." I'm probably going to work. I want to work. Me personally, I want to work with another podcast to help somebody get off the ground. I tell people this all the time. People think I'm bullshitting them. Then they're like, oh, what am I going to talk about? Uh, talk about shit. And this is crazy because Charlemagne said this shit. Dre used to say this shit all the time. He said, let's talk about what irks you. What bugs you? What, what sticks under your crawl? What, what affects you every day? Whether it's good, good or bad negative or positive what affects you every day he said that's how you find your niche i'm like fuck I'm like shit sure yeah because they signed like they said they signed a podcast because it was it was different not a black black people do it. called trap nerds and these are just dudes that talk about anime and and and, and other nerdy stuff like that which i do I can't, I can't, yeah, I talk about nerd shit, but I can't, I can't jump in a lane. <laughs> I do it, but they already, they, they, these people are, they already exist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we, and like, I was thinking about this yesterday as he's telling me this shit. I'm like, damn, we the opinionated podcast. Like, that's our name. That's what people expect us to be. Like, let's just have our own personal opinions. Nobody can think like the three of us think. And have the opinions of us three had because I think now everybody everybody's scared of fucking cancel culture. So motherfuckers' opinions a lot of times they fucking censor themselves before they even get an opinion. I don't care. I don't. I don't give a fuck. I'm just gonna say how I feel. We know this. I, y'all know that for a fact. I'm just gonna say how I feel. That's it's an opinion. It ain't meant to hurt nobody feeling. It's just my personal opinion. My opinion may be different from you. I don't get mad if, if a fucking redneck racist says he fucking think black people are lazy. That's his fucking opinion. Might be right. He's a redneck racist. Like, I don't give a fuck about him. Like, I think niggas, this nigga, think niggas me, lazy. Yeah, me and this nigga ain't got to be friends. We ain't boys. That's his That's his outlook of life. I, I don't give a fuck. Glad he's honest with it. That way, if I ever bump into this motherfucker, I know me and him don't have a conversation. But I ain't going to like, yo, he needs to be fired. Like only people I think that is in positions like that that need to be fired are like cops, judges, people that's, that can people that can who. Yeah, I know. People <laughs> that can affect other people's lives in like a serious matter. Not Those are the ones people. that will say, <laughs> get your lazy ass in the back of this cop car, nigga. <laughs> Goddamn nigger. <laughs> Goddamn nigger. Those are the ones. <laughs> the judge is gonna have you like your monkey ass up for the rest of your life. Real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. You said judge. You said judge. I know y'all remember a couple weeks ago where the dude just jumped at the judge, right? Oh my didn't that make God. y'all happy? Didn't that make y'all happy a little bit? Yeah, you make like, it bitch, that bitch deserved it. Like, <clears throat> but that's not really. Not really. I, no, 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 no. Make me happy. Wait. I mean, he had, no, he's under the jail. Um, yeah. listen, oh, that nigga ass. The reason why it made me a little happy is because we've all been in positions where we've all been in the courtroom and seen the judge just talk to you like you are a piece of absolute shit, or you've seen them sentence one of your friends or one of your family like they life ain't mean shit. You get what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah, eh, it's just 20 years. Yeah, because, because you shrugged in, in court, I'm gonna give you an extra couple years. Like your life don't mean nothing, and they can just write down on a piece of paper what your life means. That's, that's, that's why. That's yeah, why. Yeah, I understand it. that, but at the same time, it's just proving them right. Like how they, if they feel the type of way, and then you do some shit 
to coincide with how they feel or why they feel that way. And then you're doing it so everybody can see. It just gives them a reason to be like, see, I told you. And now not only are you getting this, I'm going to throw this on top because I was right. And you tried to be on some shit. She got to say that from the hospital now. Yeah. Uh, well, no, nah, he ain't even. I don't think it got her. I think she slipped up out of that. No, she I didn't. Really, he was fucked. Did you see he, him not lawnmower? Lawnmower <laughs> punching this bitch. <laughs> Y'all seen that nigga? She was hollering. Ah. Did you not see that? You ain't he see the right video. Every, ah, yeah, geez, every man, video he after, they that that after he get over the jaw and on top of her, it looked like they jumped on top of him and grabbed him off. Bro, he is <laughs> lawnmower in that bitch. Oh, yeah, you got to say that. Yeah, that nigga like they punch a lawnmower trying to start chasing all this. Yeah, like, you you said that to <laughs> and nobody that. was grabbing this you nigga arm this fast enough. You know. Yeah, that. and they was trying, it was still, punching regardless him. Regardless to the fact, regardless to the fact. You know what I mean? <laughs> they like, and bitch, then they I feel even him. worse because I know that he's not coming out no time soon. Nah, it's over for him. Cool. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's just a downward feeling. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's like. feeling bad for the criminal. I mean, listen, man, I got you, man. that did so shit, bad. and, and, the and they probably had to do shit because of the circumstances they were in, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't judge nobody for the actions that they do to other people. Just the actions you do to me is how you get judged by me. And if if you did something then, especially if I know you, and you tell me, like, yo, it was like this, da-da-da-da, and, and I, I tend to like to think that I hang around more people who keep it a hundred with me and just tell me what's going on rather than somebody to just make some wild ass story up. But you know, it's 50, 50 in these streets. So I don't know what the fuck you talking about neither, Kev. Well, so when they, so when they tell me what's going on, <laughs> nah, listen, the fuck so when they tell me what's going on and they done did some shit that got them caught up in the system, you know what I mean? Like I have friends who've been caught up in the system for a long ass time right. and they tell me why they did what they did. I don't place no judgment on them. You know what I mean? It, it you did what you had to do at that at that situation. So yeah, I might feel bad for him because it's like, damn dog, like now that you did this, you're gonna do some old other dumb shit, which is gonna fuck you over in the long run, all the way. There ain't nothing yeah. that's gonna be able to help you, and everybody's gonna be able to see that. Yeah. So back to the question. What is that long is that long time your friends doing as long as this fucking story you telling us. <laughs> Kev, I know you're not talking about long ass stories, nigga. When you tell the same story over the fuck over and over again, nigga, I'm pretty sure we'll jump into another story of yours that you told us last week. Oh shit! <laughs> Kev came in with the Ginsu knife or whatever the fuck you call that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <coughs> oh shit! Oh, there you go, buddy. <laughs> That's why nobody can duplicate this podcast. <laughs> yeah, we we're going. Hey, we've been going on our six years, and we're going to continue. But we we're going on six years. This is right here. It's going to be six years. Now, oh, shit. I think I think another thing that they um they came up on is managing your expectations as well. Yeah. So. The one thing that you're going to do, your expectations is going to go like this. When you do a podcast, when you do any endeavor, you're going to get discouraged. You're going to be super excited. And I think you have to kind of bring them both. Like if they're like this, oh shit. If they're like this, you have to kind of bring them both to this level. You kind of got to compress them. You know what I'm saying? Bring them both to the middle. Um, because if you're super low on what you're doing, you'll quit. You'll quit or you'll put super low effort into it. Right? And Believe it or not, people can tell when you put super low effort into something. And the people who were on your side will honestly fall. Whoever you had on your side will kind of just fall by the wayside because you ain't put no effort in. And then when you get super excited, but your work don't match the excitement, you know what I'm saying? Then you'll also fall off. So I think you got to bring them both your expectations to about the middle and then work from there. Just work. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's something I took from there as well. Okay. You gotta have more realistic expectations too. That was yeah, that's yeah. a short way of saying yeah. yeah. You're yeah. right. There you go. <laughs> there, that's, that, that'll, that'll work. That'll that'll work better. Have more realistic expectations of 
Because that's another yeah, thing. That's what you was trying to say about me. Yeah. <laughs> no, my shit was fire though. Fuck you, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> talk about realistic expectations. Nah, well, I can't. You, you just start talking about some other shit. We talk about beating the judge up. This nigga talk about the crime his friend committing. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, nigga, y'all was talking about me feeling bad for the nigga. Yeah, I do feel bad for the nigga all the way. I was misrepresented by a white lawyer. I'm like, what? So, so yeah. yeah. What, what else but, you learned? But, I, but you learned? I was going back to that uh, the Charlemagne and Black Effect comment. That's why I brought up the expectations thing is because um, when what we were trying to say earlier is how they were saying we don't sign podcast for millions and millions of dollars unless you're like million dollars worth of game unless the unless your value is represented that way that's what they were saying most of the time you're going to get like a pretty respectable salary actually they said 250 a year should be something that you should be all right with if you get paid to talk that's what they were saying if i heard it wrong let me know no but they were saying right. but they were saying like Nigga, what what would you be complaining about if somebody said, here, here, go a check for that, for the year, for you to do what you love to do for an hour and a half a week, every 40 weeks out of the year? And I think there was that was a powerful statement because this is not you, you should look at it like something that you can build off of. This is what I took from it. You don't just have to podcast and that's it. Mm -hmm. You become an entity in a way they were talking about starting media companies and, 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 and doing multiple things out of that. It's up to you to take whatever they give you, whether it's $50,000 a year or $250,000 a year and turn your brand, brand building, turn your brand into more to do more with. Cause when you build your brand, that's when you can actually generate more money off of your brand. So you could take the check, but you could build your brand to the point where you, there's way more checks. Well, Gill Gillian Wallow talked about how uh, like they went into um, the car dealership with no proof of concept, only the numbers. You know what I'm saying? And basically what they did, which they had the work ethic to do, they went in there, they pitched, and they were able to do it successfully where the car dealership sold more than they ever sold and they basically signed them to a or they signed a contract for like a he said a lifetime but we don't know but a lifetime the proof was in the pudding they were able to generate more money from who they are and what they do to, to contribute to what they're doing so that's what i mean it's like you have to have the wherewithal to go out and generate more money the business acumen and you can't be scared um as far as um talking about Brandon, man. He's talking about uh, Brandy and shit. A, a good thing he said yesterday is like people us in general too. It's like, man, if you got a brand as far as like the podcast, you should be wearing that shit every fucking day. Everybody, people should be coming up to you and say, hey, you got a podcast. Like you should have a jacket on or a hat or a hoodie or something that shows that you have podcasts. Because it's sometimes I wear my shirt, my painted podcast shirt, and I'll be wearing that and get the awkward cash you got a podcast i'm like yeah and you'd be nervous to share but you gotta and i gotta get that out of my head like yo man fuck it he's willing to check this shit out whether he fuck with it or not like i gotta give him a shot here it is this is what i do go ahead you know what i'm saying everybody yeah. want to stop me because they think i got a podcast let them stop me and fucking let them make their own opinion up man it's you know and hey, you think it don't happen no, it's it happened, happened, it happened, it happened to me multiple times. Nigga, stop you randomly. Yo, you gotta, yeah. Yo, where can I find it at? That's literally what a motherfucker would do. Yeah. Yep. Weird as shit ever. I, I go on the phone and I show him where it's at and hit the follow button for him. Yeah. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. And you just gotta evangelize your shit. Like if you if you got it and you're proud of it, evangelize it. I don't give a fuck if you were doing it for fun. You should that should be even more of a reason because now the pressure's off. Just fucking Yo, yo, this is my shit. Yo, this is what we do. You know what I'm saying? Or this is what I do. I don't give a fuck if it's about pet grooming. Mm -hmm. Yo, I got a podcast about pet grooming. Word. Where is that? Okay, let me check it out. There you go. Yeah. Another thing we gotta do, which we've been fucking terrible at doing, which they brought up, man, is uh doing a couple of sponsorships, man. Whether whatever it be, man. You know, club for men. Yeah, you're right. 
maybe get your fucking beard in the process. <laughs> yeah. I'll cut, I'm cutting mine off. I don't care. You, you gonna cut it. your beard off? Yeah, this shit about to be going. He ain't gonna cut his shit off. He's gonna p- pull one side like this and just peel that picture off. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna take the patch from under down here and put it up here. <laughs> hey, and then but nobody said nothing about no hair transfer. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I mean, I mean, maybe maybe you cut you your know. beard off and it's not growing, and maybe it'll allow your mustache to grow in fully. That can stay like it is. Yeah. Uh, you, oh, you you, have, oh, oh, you thought you was busting. No, nah, you care, I don't care about none of that. You have a face of a nigga who don't wear who don't wear facial hair. You got a no facial hair face. Like you, Keyshawn <laughs> Johnson. Uh, who else? They are, like, you still look young. Man, it's hard to trust niggas without beards and mustaches. Like you look at a black dude without a beard or a mustache, he looks like he sold out the slaves or something. You look like he would set you up to come to a Nigga, plane. Y'all niggas with beards look like y'all got something to hide. Why you can't show your chin, dog? What's wrong with it? Oh, my chin fucked up. What's wrong with it? Man, you got shit. an ass chin? What's wrong ass. with your shit? I got a square. I got one of the old school Batman square chins from the 90s series. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I got one of those straight chisel chins. Yeah, but I don't like that cool. shit. It's cool. But, that's, but we could get a sponsorship for Hair Club for Men. Y'all niggas, y'all niggas, yeah, I'm bald. I know that shit, nigga. I'm I was going off of what we was. What's the saying. dollar shave? You get bro? what I'm saying? You the get what I'm or the dollar shave. Yeah. What I'm saying is you could you could pull play off of that and go that way with it. Yeah, because yeah, you say gotta gotta be something that deals with your podcast because you don't want to have selling bath bombs and niggas don't not one of us takes a bath all of us take showers i take a I shower mean, no that's not what I, they no I, they I mean, they specifically said that you could your do ass things. doesn't necessarily have to do anything with your podcast at all ads are just a form of revenue i have the video in there just in you case know? Y'all watch and that. and what you can do is you can just you could just bring it into conversation randomly get your minute off of talking about the app and then go back to what you were originally talking about well, like said, they said that they don't it don't have to do anything your ads are just a form of revenue they basically want to be on your show or or you get to talk about them mm-hmm. because they know how many views that you can produce mm-hmm. it ups their chances of being able to sell more products yeah. so Another thing we got to do, I think we're going to do in the future. Hopefully, Dre come back up here. Uh, I'll be coming back up, man. Let we got to host because we did this shit before, which is crazy. We got to do again. We got to host another live event, man. Like I think our live event. Yeah, nigga, you made some money off of us that night, motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> nigga, that nigga that ducked the podcast. What the fuck his name is? What's your boy name? I, I don't give a fuck. Y'all can, yeah, what's you, be, you be knowing niggas too. That's the funny part. I don't care. What's, what's no, I, people names. I don't, man. Like I actually fucking don't. I'm drawing a blank right here. Probably going through early all times, all timers. Um, all, all the time you be going to all, all the timers, nigga. <laughs> what is this nigga name? Josh. That nigga, Josh. He got off on us that night. Like you made, we you we made some money that night because we brought all the niggas in there. We fucking. Promoted that shit as an ugly sweater well, that's, party. That's we, what business is. Yeah, it's and, cool, and, but I think we, we could have got a, a piece of the door, dog. Now we know, but you, but, but, okay. So let's let's bring this back into. I want to use this example, and let's bring this into what they were saying. That's where business comes in at, and having the business acumen. You don't have to go out and just be like. So I think what people think is that you have to go out. And try to sell your podcast to people, and that's how you get like like you're a rapper, and they're they're going to give you money to sign. Like that's not the only revenue you can make. In the example you just gave, that's something you can negotiate. Hey, we'll come in, and we'll we we'll, we can split the door. That's something you throw in there. Mm-hmm. If you go to a person and they have a venue, and you never bring that part up, they're not going to say, "Y'all want to split the door." We could do that. No, nah, we didn't. They're going to they, they gonna say, yo, we're going to set you up here. We're going to do this. We're going to do that and do this they and do that. They set us but, up with shit that night. But we, but we either and we we weren't thinking that way back then because we actually just started. It's cool. So, I, so now that we know, mm-hmm. you got to be willing to 
walk away from shit if it ain't right. That means going into a store, going into a cheesesteak spot, local cheesesteak spot. Hey man, we can we can put you on the podcast. No matter what view, how many views we get, yo, we give you a spot. Let's do fifty dollars, fifty dollars a week, and do that for for four episodes, right? Whatever it is, it's two hundred dollars. If they say how many views you get, and you tell them and you go over like your whatever however you choose to sell it and they say uh let's do 25 if 200 is your price you gotta be willing to say um you know what now nah, we're gonna go in another direction you get what i'm saying yeah. same thing same thing walking into that that and he say yo let's split the door and he say nah y'all can add 25 percent of the door okay well we just won't do it uh whenever y'all willing to do this boom, boom boom we'll come back you it's it's business it's all business even if yeah. you don't want it to be business, it is already. <laughs> you got to be able to negotiate your worth and know yeah. and know how to negotiate your worth. Like, I think we can sell out another room. Like, we, we, we did it. And it was fun. It was fun. I had fun that night. I had a great time. You know what I'm saying? It was it was a great time and everything like that. But I think you, turn, you, you, you might want to turn yourself down, bro. Yeah. That shit was crazy. Even the uh, even the the uh, my bad the nineties party that we had that you threw when you put that together, that was a good time too. A lot of people came to that, and that was another free event. Now now you're muted. Turn you yourself, yourself turn yourself up. You should yeah. Just... Yo, you still yo you still muted, bro? Yeah, I don't know what that is. So there we go. I'm not muted no more. There you go. I know what happened. Uh, you got to understand if I'm podcasting from my home, people, which you can do. And I just had a four year old <laughs> walk in the door with me. But my wife was sure that she would be asleep while I was recording my podcast. Come in here and ask me, can I put on Elf in the Shell freeze dance? Because <laughs> supposed to be taken. She doesn't want to do that. She wants to go in this room and turn the fuck up. <laughs> Kevin you around. Know? Yeah. So that people. Who's listening? Don't let your wife convince you into having kids if you got a 15-year-old. Just stop. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my God. Stop. <laughs> Just stop yourself. Enjoy life. Be old. Enjoy naps. Enjoy moments like this. I love my four-year-old. Like if I did it all over, I had to do it all over the same way because she's a fucking joy to have. She comes in my room every night. Good good clean up. In the Jump in the I middle of the bed, you totally take the color, take the covers off of us, <laughs> kick my kick my wife out the bed, make her sleep on the couch. Shadi must have poked her head out the door, like, excuse me. She's <laughs> not here. I don't give a fuck. She can hear this and watch this podcast. Because you went Hello? one direction and then you it was like you ah, know because I, I, I gotta say I do love my baby. And then and then was passive aggressive when he yeah, did it. I love, yeah, I love I love my four-year-old. I don't get it twisted. I love her, but man, she Jesus <laughs> Lord. It, it's Mary. It's it's one of those things. Um, so you're going to go through in trials and tribulations, but I say, man, because uh, we were kind of going off of what we learned from 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 the, from the um podcast. podcasting conference, PodCon 2024, which they're going to have another one. Y'all said in six months, which I would like to be ready to go to that one. I absolutely want to be ready to go to that one. Yeah. Going to be ready. Excuse me. Um, Just gotta come to Jersey, and we got and we got to. That's fine. We got to prepare better. Definitely have to prepare for this better. And, and, yeah. yeah, we gotta get better seats, get there a little earlier, make sure we'll make a get, thing of it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I want to ask some, I wanted to ask some real questions, but they answered most of the questions I wanted to ask anyway. And really, like like I said, what really what I got out of that fucking podcon was confirmation is like we know what we're doing, like. The difference between them and us is network. We do got in yeah, networking. We do got to step our game up on social media. Um, we got to know how to better read who's really fucking with us. Like who's who's actually checking for the podcast and how to gear our podcast for them. Because a couple of times, man, like I'm not gonna fr fraud. 
we have gotten away who the fuck we were. Like we, because we thought at this point in our time of podcast, we were supposed to be this far along. But if I would have heard somebody, if I would have heard Charlemagne say, hey, man, it takes seven years for a podcast to really pop, then I wouldn't, I don't think we would have changed the direction we was going. We would have just kept doing what we was already fucking doing because we was, like, we was getting traction. We was. And I think we would have continued that way, continued our traction, and seven years later, we'd probably been a little bit ahead of the game. Probably knew what to look for. Probably been fucking with social media a little bit more heavier because, like, I really feel as though at one point in our time in this podcast, we got lost. I don't know about y'all, but I know I felt that way. You see, you know what I mean, I this was I was I wasn't I signing up for this shit. I got lost. <laughs> I like I, no n- nigga. I was like I didn't sign up for this. Like I came here to have fun. You get what I'm saying? That's what I like. That's what I look for. We used to look forward to jumping on a podcast to have fun. We had our topics, but we had fun. And then we like we can't say nigga no more. We can't curse. We can't swear. Can't yeah, say I big that. jokes. That didn't last long at all. Yeah, we can't it say didn't. big jokes. I, I don't think it even lasted the, after the sentence. As soon as Dre said, "Yo, we gotta stop saying nigga," just, no, I, he immediately nigga. said nigga. <laughs> I, I reposted that episode. The immediately said nigga. Yeah, so it was like it was like I was like yo, it was like but everybody, and then you realize like you see Cam and them. Them niggas themselves. You see million dollars worth of game. Them niggas is themselves. It's just niggas is like, but they have what they're talking about. Million dollars worth of game is what it is. They're giving game out. Uh, it is what it is. They're talking about sports, but they're doing them. We the fucking opinionated podcast. We got opinions on shit that's different from everybody, and we're going to be funny, and we're going to do what we do. You know what I'm saying? That's what I think we got to really get back to, and I think that's what our niche is. Our niche is like we got opinions on certain shit. We gonna we able to talk about. It. That's why our name what it is. It gives us a a broader array of topics we can fucking get in on instead of fucking pigeonholing this and then fucking something so narrow. What's wrong, Dre? You looking up like your wife's talking to you? Of course. No, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> yeah, she's looking at that light in the background. Like, wish you about to f- film a fucking porn or something with that fucking red light in the background. I wish. Oh my I god! Wish. About to f- midget Miami and go <laughs> get two Puerto Rican midgets. Miami. To have this run down on. All right, man. Listen, that's niggas yeah. fetish. You you wouldn't do it. Midgets. What got are you talking about, yo? I'm just saying about your porn light in the background. You get you a nice little midget with one of the little midget booties. You rub that little midget head. Little little person. Little person. Look, midget. look, look. I say what I want to say. Go ahead. I, I am. I'm sorry. I don't I apologize if I offended somebody. I didn't mean to offend you, but I don't know. Yeah, y'all Listen, still if y'all Rogan, still got niggas, y'all still got niggas break dancing on TV shows. I don't say nothing about that. If Joe Rogan if, can say nigga, if Joe Rogan can say nigga, <laughs> then you can say the, the other word. I, I guess can say, I can say listen, man. <laughs> as much racist shit me. that goes on in Hollywood, <laughs> every black person on every white TV show here, got bro. these most fucked up braids that I ever seen in my life. I would just think, what's that show with Robert Townsend that he used to have? And the nigga had the bob cut, uh, uh, he had the bob cut braids. What was that show called? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Parenthood. Parenthood. Like this nigga had a bob Yo, cut he braids. definitely had the show. He had the Maxine Shaw braids. He did. Hey, yo. He definitely, <laughs> he definitely Y'all did. let niggas I can't do lie. Lie. Y'all let this Hollywood. Was like this. Sharp. Y'all let, yeah. Y'all let Hollywood say shit like that. Y'all oh. disrespect us all the time. But I can't say midget. Is that's, offensive? That's not the same thing. But I feel you, bro. Whatever you want to do. I'm speech. a media. I'm a media outlet saying something that might be offensive. Just or, or is offensive. I I don't know. But I'm just saying they just they do shit all the time. Zach had Zach from the Power Rangers. This nigga had to dance when he he was the only bro, nigga that no didn't know karate. That shit was disrespectful. No, 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 no. That nigga, Zach shit. The shit that that nigga was doing in that show was disrespectful, bro. Well, I was just the nigga. hairline, everything. Yeah. 
disrespectful, bro. Yeah, they can't never find a black person to play on these white TV shows start with dancing. a proper headline. <laughs> did, did you yeah. did you see who? his commercial that he had before who? that though? Yeah, who this nigga hairline looks like these headphones? It's like this. it was nasty, bro. It was nasty, yeah. and he was a black ranger. Why they do that? Yeah. So I'm just saying. So me saying midget, I'm sorry. Just it's said not the person. same. <laughs> just said little person. I'm just saying, you get jerked off with them little teeny hands and shit like that. It just could it be something different. <laughs> Can't really grip it too tight. Just yeah. <laughs> gotta use my strong hand. <laughs> it was a, it was a yeah, it was a nigga out there like that yesterday. I was gonna say something, but I didn't. I'm uh, oh, sorry. I guess this I, is where we end things. I, I, a long time ago. <laughs> Y'all know I'm, I'm, getting, about, I'm sorry. Little person orgies and shit. I'm sorry, man. Listen, if you if you're new to the opinion, opinionated podcast, sometimes they gotta separate themselves from me because I say some shit that shouldn't be said. I'm cutting all that shit. <laughs> yeah, you can't cut it all. It's, it's all good. I'm just Kev, how, Kev, how you expect Charlemagne to call you after that? <laughs> How do you expect that? I don't know, because I could just imagine now if I was assigned to a major podcast, they probably have a fucking sit down with me once. I tell you this, show on some real shit. Shout out to Charlemagne because even after the show was done, he sat out there for like ten minutes just talking to people while he was on the stage, taking That's pictures, dope. signing shit, getting people's information. You know what I mean? I don't know how genuine it'll be. Maybe they use this to get. To see who's going to be their next podcast to see what people can bring, because yeah. he was taking a lot of, of business cards. People were bringing a lot of merch, you know. What I mean, giving out a lot of free merch to them, and um, you know they were giving out books. People was, had books that was written. They was giving out, and they were taking all of that shit. They were giving out the DMs and the whole thing. So shout out to uh, Charlemagne. Shout out to Dolly. That was some. That was some dope shit to do. Um, yeah. Shout out to Wallow. The event was cool as hell. DJ Alamo had everybody turned for a good two hours almost before they even started mm-hmm. the podcast. So, uh, you know, they had food. Well, food wasn't free, but they had they had concessions in there. They had, had drinks. drinks. You know what I mean? Damn, y'all killed me with that yeah. drink. That's like forty-four dollars for two drinks. Yeah, you ain't had your flasks, bro. Not real, real, real nah, shit. Real shit. I had a metal detector. That's how yeah. it is. And even, when, even when we walked through the metal detector, they pulled cabs to the side, like, can you go over there, please? And then when I walked through, I had key, I had keys, AirPods, all types of stuff in my pocket. It was like change. It was like, all right, go ahead. I was like, oh can't trust tall niggas, bro. Can't trust <laughs> they had to pull, they had to pull everything out of his pockets, jacket pockets. Could have gotten there with a water bottle though. It's a, it's a nah, I probably could nah, I probably could have, but yeah, but I like, can't. Kev was saying about Charlemagne, like a lot. I know, like niggas try to take some niggas try to take shots at him. I, it changed meeting him yesterday. Changed my whole perspective of anybody ever trying to say something negative about you him. Don't let that happen, right? Hell no, I'm not gonna let, bro. Because you ever hear how motherfuckers like, oh, what makes him think he can re- represent all black people and all that type of shit? Because people have said that shit about him. Right, um, right, right. Meeting him yesterday, that changed, like. Motherfuckers who say that about him is like, yo, I, what I seen yesterday, like, this nigga. He should represent all black people now? Yeah, he should represent all black people. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Yo, no, dead ass, because it was a chick that came all the way from Chicago about talking about violence in the neighborhood. And she just came there looking for somebody to come speak on the shit. Charlamagne mm. was like, yo, I definitely need some money. If you show me oh, wow. that your shit is legit and that is a real backing, I I'll back his shit. He got a name. Make sure he got all the information. I'll come. He said, I'll come out there. I speak. So, like, yo, it's like me. I seen that yesterday. It's like, yo, I think some niggas just be fucking hating just to hate, man, because the thing they ain't got this, spot, is, this spotlight. I, you, when I was, when I, when I listened to the podcast or I watched their show or whatever the case may be, because their, their, their show is just, uh, the same as the podcast, but he does that on the radio show. He'll have people, you know, put on hold so he can get their information, trade information, maybe give them a book or whatever the case may be a sign. And when you when you hear it on a radio station, you don't know how genuine it is. But when you actually see that happening, 
like, yo, let me get your information or DM me here. I remember here, give me your card, this and a third. It just it just hits you differently. Like, yo, yeah. this dude's actually out here trying to make a difference. It ain't just for the show. You know, you know what I'm saying? And to be able to do stuff like that for free and him saying, because while I was like, I'm not going to hit you again about it. You know what I mean? You came this time. I, I won't burn you out. And he was like, nah, you call me every time for something like this. I'm here. Yeah, so, you know what I mean? I was a little disappointed so, Gary V wasn't there. That's that's one person I really wanted to. That's all you talked about. The there. Oh, yeah, right. I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted him to be there. I don't know who Gary V is. Can I try to get some uh, knowledge? He says you didn't. Oh. I didn't make that up. Am he I wrong? He don't know who Gary B is. Yeah, all right. I'm about to say. I thought he was saying, yeah. I'm when I said that, Kev was like, when I told him, I was like, yo, I'm here. I really want to see Gary V. I really want to hear it because he talks some shit. And, and the shit that he makes you, the, the inspiration he gives you just off of regular conversation, be like, yo, I'm about to go home, try to make a million bucks before the end of the day type shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he wasn't able to come. He sent a video that was a little like two minute John, but that was a little disappointing. But other than that, everything else was fly. We'll, we'll hit, we'll hit other ones, man. Well, I'll sure be I, there. Well, in closing, because we're wrapping this shit the fuck up, man. Um, yeah. Pacon, thank you for hosting the event yesterday. Like I said, uh, learned a lot. Learned a lot. Me and Kev was there. Dre was there in spirit. He watched on. You know, we streamed it for him. Thank y'all, man. And, yeah, thank y'all, man. And no, thank, thank you, y'all. Oh yeah, well thank thank <laughs> Podcon for like for y'all confirming a lot of shit that we had doubts on ourselves. Like y'all brought that shit to light. Like, look, we we on the right path, and we know we don't. It's just that we just a couple of things short from being up there with the upper echelon people because a lot of shit they said yesterday, a lot of shit that we are we've been saying behind the scenes off the air. A lot of not arguments, but heated discussions. We kept right. threatening my life. Man, close this shit, man. Off. Close this shit. Turn this shit off. I'm off. Oh, peace. You, oh, you can't reach it. Oh, all right. Peace. Oh.